Welcome to Castle Bolton at our uh, splendid cottage here with Castle Bolton, uh, the castle about 30 metres just out the window over there, bathed in sunshine. Um, we are here because we had the cottage booked for the, the festival and when it was sadly um, postponed we decided to come here anyway for a holiday. Then Jill and Paul suggested the idea of the online festival so we thought okay we can just play some music while we're there so here we are um, but sadly some of the people the team um, band members who are going to be at the concert uh, Helena McGilt singing and playing lutes and uh, Ruth Pollitt on shawms and recorders can't be with us um, but with, we have Andrew Kesselman with us who is one of our oldest band members, going back probably longer than he cares to remember. <laughs> so, um, that's roughly where we are. Yes, I do know. And um, this is Kate Webb um, on harps and things. <laughs> and Theodora Hidalgo on the vials and some narration. And myself, Chris Elms. I'll pick up the right instrument. <laughs> Next piece is a catcher. More later. <laughs>
So uh, the program we've put together is actually quite a lot of pieces that we've been working on, sort of quite new in our repertoire. Uh, quite a few of them are actually just since the world went all pear-shaped. <laughs> so this is a good opportunity to actually have them give them an airing. Uh, so the last one was a very, was a very new one for us, and the two more new ones are two pieces by Guillaume de Machault, or Guillaume de Machaut, depending on where you think Old French moved to, or when you think Old French moved to Middle French. But anyway. Yeah. If, if people want details, like there is a program, um, so you probably, hopefully you found it on the website, there's a program with yes. details of all the pieces.
magical from the. No, it's not from the Rossi Codex. It's magical by Jacopo de Bologna, one of the earliest of the Trecento composers and named ones anyway. Uh, and a, a sadly neglected piece. Motorcycles running past, but they're all gone now. <laughs> um, well, this year's proceedings have not quite gone as planned. However, we would still like to give you a flavour of the concert that we would have been performing this year in Castle Bolton. So, based on the Decameron, we would like to present Anno Orribile.
2020, the world was attacked by a deadly virus. In a few short months, many thousands were self-isolating within their castle walls. And in this suffering and misery, the authority of human and divine laws almost disappeared. Church of St. Giles, two young women of noble blood, fair, well-mannered, and of graceful modesty, met by chance. One says, for the preservation of our lives, we should leave this town of Edinburgh and go and live in our country cottage in Wensleydale. Let us enjoy whatever pleasures and merriment we can, unless death comes upon us until we see what end heaven decrees upon this plague. The ladies agree, and they invite to go with them two young men. The men were pleasant, well-mannered, valiant, and discreet. At dawn next morning, they mount their horses and set out on their journey. Pampanea is elected, and at her command, the musicians take up their instruments, and she tells her story. 
There was in Florence a young man called Federigo, who fell in love with a married woman, Mona Giovanna. To win her love he jousted, gave feasts and spent his money without stint. But she, no less chaste than beautiful, cared nothing for this. He spent far beyond his means and was eventually forced to retire to his small farm, where his only comfort was to go hawking with his excellent falcon. Some time later, Mona Giovanna's husband died and her son also fell ill. She spent every day beside her son, often asking if there was anything he wanted. He said, Mother, if you can get me Federigo's falcon, I think I might soon be better. Though the lady felt embarrassed to approach her former admirer for such a gift, the love for her son got the upper hand and she went to visit. Federigo was greatly surprised to see her and also greatly embarrassed for he must provide a repast but had no suitable food. Leaving her in the garden, he rushed inside and spying his falcon saw that it was plump and before he could think further, wrung its neck and gave it to his maid to roast on the spit. After they had eaten, the lady made her request that for the sake of her son, he make her a gift of his falcon. Poor Federigo began to weep and explained how fortune had mistreated him as he had thought to honour his lady with the finest possible dish, his falcon, which he now could not give her in the form she required. The lady though upset, inwardly commended his greatness of soul and generosity in giving, killing such a bird to, to do her honour. And so in time she began to think there was no other man she would wish to marry. So it was in the end they were united. enjoyed our little tale of plagued woe. We also hope that you will be able to join us back here next year at Castle Bolton for our full and original Decameron concert. Thank you. The next piece will be familiar to some people. Um, it's the Istanbul Gerta. Um, some people may be in, uh, have seen the manuscript, which is very clearly a performer's manuscript. 
it's uh, all full of complete idiosyncratic um, symbols and signs, but the actual range of the pieces, each of the pieces and the Ficta notes that are included make it quite probable that it was written by a lute player. So you have a lute player, <laughs> two player, and a hanger on drummer. <laughs> Thank you. 
next is a um, piece by Francesco Landini. Again, apparently sadly neglected. Uh, it's possibly this is our newest piece, I believe. Uh, two more pieces. Uh, the next one is a mad another madrigal from the Rossi Codex, the earliest of the Trecento manuscripts, full of very fine music. This is just one of them. Um.
And one last piece, another by Francesco Landini. This one is peculiar because it's a, we actually love it, but we've never been able to find any recordings or any reference to a performance anywhere. If anyone knows anything, tell us, please do tell us. It's called Somerse Donna. <laughs>